Welcome back. Several subscribers have written in asking about the absolute fundamental kitchen tools, the tricks of the trade, the things that I could not cook on a regular basis without. So a couple years ago I had to make that hard decision to pare my kitchen down to a small box that was about this big and that was all I could have for 15 months. And so I'll tell you the things that are absolutely essential and then I'll tell you the things that are really nice to have if you have a little extra space. So here they are. So the most basic thing for me in the kitchen is my chef's knife. This is a 7 inch Henkel's um, Pro S. There are things I like about this knife and things I don't like about this knife. Um, specifically, but knives are very individual. You have to hold them in your hand and feel if it fits, you know, fits your hand and feels good to you. So this one is the knife that I use 90% mm, of the time. If I could only have one knife, it would be this knife. Um, when you get married or you get lulled into buying a whole set and a butcher block full of knives, it's nice to have a bread knife. It's nice to have a small paring knife, um, but for me, if I only had to choose one, I would just have this knife. It's, I do almost everything with it. So those are knives. We'll start with utensils and then I'll go to pots and then other kind of extraneous items. So the next thing is a nice wooden spoon. Um, I have I have traditional round spoons, but I prefer these flat guys because when you're scraping stuff off the bottom of your pan, it's just such an efficient tool. So they're cheap, they're great, it's nice to have several. This one has only been in sweet items. It's never stirred marinara or anything with garlic. So I do try to keep um, one that has a distinct shape for sweets, ice creams, jams, things like that, so it doesn't get contaminated. Another really important item for me is a really good spatula, a nice turner. Um, what I look for in these is something that's very thin, low profile, so I can get underneath eggs and things that are fragile um, really easily. But I also like a little flexibility. If they're too stiff, it, it, they're not good. I don't know what that does. This, I have had a couple stiff ones and I've given them away. So this particular one I just bought at a restaurant supply store. It's not a fancy one by any means, but um, it I just like how thin it is and I like that there's a lot of surface area so I can get under pancakes and things and flip them over um, easily without breaking them. So that's my spatula. A good pair of kitchen tongs. A high heat rubber scraper. I use these all the time. I use them for stirring, I use them for eggs, I use them for scraping my bowls, my blenders. Um, a microplane zester. These tools are fantastic and they, um, I don't know, they came out, what, 10 years ago or so? And I can't imagine how we cooked without them, but they're fantastic. They were just designed from an old rasp, an old woodworking's, woodworker's rasp, and rasps work just as well. Um, they're razor sharp, micro fine little blades, and they're great for hard items such as nutmeg, cinnamon, hard chocolate, hard cheeses. But they're also wonderful for zesting citrus. There's an interesting thing, when you start to zest like a lemon or an orange, it will take the zest off without removing the white pith, and the white pithy part is bitter. So these things are really fantastic. Um, and if you grate fine stuff, I love them for Parmesan cheese, you can make this like pillowy cloud of Parmesan cheese with one of these. They're really wonderful. And if you're a baker, a set of Spoons and cups is essential. Another essential item is a whisk. And this one is actually a French whisk. What I love so much about this one is the gauge of wire is really thin. And the fact that it's so long, you can get them in different sizes, but um, these are the same thing, just different sizes. The fact that it's so long 
gives a lot of movement to the whisk. So when you're whipping, these wires are freely moving on their own, and so they're creating some of their own momentum, and it doubles the work um, with half the effort. And so the French whisks are great. I have this little Rossley whisk, and this is more considered a balloon whisk where it's fatter. Um, I don't like this thing. It's too small for starters. Um, I have to be like in the bowl, and it's hard, and the wires don't move, and so you don't get that extra um, kind of momentum. So not all whisks are created equally. These are lovely. I personally don't like this little one. And a mandolin. This is a fixed, not very flexible mandolin, but I love it. Um, I have one with all these adjustable widgets and gadgets and stuff, and I don't use it. Um, this one's fantastic. It has a cutting blade that is, I don't know, maybe two centimeters, eighth of an inch thick. And, and a main blade. These sit just below. I don't know if you can see it, but they sit just below um, the main cutting blade. So when you, what do I have to cut? So when you cut with this thing, it makes these beautiful little tiny pieces of whatever it is, apple, potato, beet, any sort of hard vegetable. Um, and I love this. I love it for roasting. I love them for putting apples into salads. Um, for sandwiches, carrot strips, it's a wonderful thing. So it, this is probably not an essential for a lot of people, but for me, I use this thing probably daily. Um, and it's just one of those things I love. It adds a unique texture to whatever it is that you're making. Another item that's really important, especially for the bakers, is to have a liquid measuring cup. So this is a great one. It has milliliters, ounces, tablespoons, pints, cups, all around the side. And recipes are calibrated using specific measurements for liquid and dry ingredients. And these cups are for dry ingredients, and this is for liquid. So I see a lot of people measuring liquids in these, and for a lot of recipes it might not be a big deal, um, but it's just nice to be accurate when you're baking. You'll have better success. Given that the knife is my most important utensil, it's also equally important to have a good knife sharpener and a nice ceramic to keep your knife honed in between sharpenings. And this knife sharpener, the one that my husband uses, is an Edge Pro. These are made right here in our hometown and they're lovely. Uh, it's adjustable to any size knife so you have this little plate that slides down and so you can fit big knives little tiny knives and you also can vary the angle that these stones rest on so this is all movable and so you find out what the angle of your knife bevel is by taking a piece of uh, or taking a little felt marker and you run along the edge of the knife and then you run the stone across and you can see exactly where that angle is and get it just perfect so you can match the existing angle of your, of your knife bevel. And then you just polish and there are several different stones that come with it and so you graduate those down and it's, it's a really simple, small, portable, easy to use machine that does an amazing job. If you like these videos, hit subscribe. You'll get new ones updated weekly. And also hit the thumbs up button. It really helps the searches and helps others find their way here. Thanks for spreading the love. Enjoy your day.